want to ask you to imagine. Imagine that you're a speech-language pathologist, or otherwise known as an, known as an SLP. You have, you have had so many experiences through the university, and you know how to properly diagnose a child with having a speech-language impairment. One day, during your work at an elementary school, you've been asked to administer tests to two elementary students. One student named Zachary, the other named Trevor. After administering some tests, analyzing the data, you notice one peculiar thing. Many of the students, or both of the students, have very similar information in terms of their articulation you begin to realize, oh, maybe this student has a speech-language delay or some type of developmental disorder. But then you start to examine other things, and you realize that there's really a major difference between Zachary and Trevor, even though their information was very similar. And that difference is race. See, Zach is white, and Trevor is black. Statistically, Trevor is way more likely to be misdiagnosed as having an articulation disorder when, in fact, he's just using black English or African-American English. Unfortunately, this has been a huge issue that's been going on in special education for quite some time. In fact, black students overrepresent themselves in special education as a whole, particularly in speech-language pathology. So as a Ronald McNair scholar, I had an opportunity to try to figure out what is it that happens with the clinician? Why and how do they misinterpret a dialect, a simple difference in the way that someone speaks that's influenced by who they are as being a medical issue? How could this be? So first, I'll begin with African-American English. What is it? African-American English is basically Pigeon Creole, which is the mixture of African diaspora and English mixed together, influenced by the history and culture of African-Americans. And of course, slavery and other concepts such as oppression are also included. What's pretty unfortunate about African-American English is that it has a negative connotation. It is considered to be a dialect. And according to the American Speech Association, a dialect is perfectly fine English. It's just a variation, a difference in the way that someone pronounces words. In actuality, we all have our own dialect, whether, ba whether it's based on where we live in the United States, south, north, east, west, or our dialect can be determined by our culture, the community we're a part of. Well, to me, I found this quite interesting. How could something that's considered perfectly normal, everyone has a dialect, how is it that one group of people who uses that dialect get misinterpreted as having a problem? So I looked into some things, and this is what I found. According to the American Speech Language Association, or ASHA, they stress that every speech language pathologist has to understand the linguistic features or phonological rules and characteristics of every dialect in order to differentiate between that of a disorder and that of a dialect. It is every speech language pathologist's responsible. <laughs> it is every speech language pathologist responsibility and duty to make sure that they never make this mistake. Yet, for more than 50, 60 years, this problem has been going on. So, based on my research, I found three consistent reasons why speech-language pathologists often make this very poor decision. First, speech-language pathologists often don't even know what African-American English is. They don't understand that there are specific, very specific, phonological rules and characteristics of that community. Now, unfortunately, many of those characteristics correlate very similarly with 
standard American English, so it makes it kind of difficult to differentiate between the two. But there are so many specific characteristics of African American English that you can't sort of misdiagnose. Number two, I found that speech language pathologists oftentimes use norm reference standardized tests. It's very common for these professionals to use these tests. But what they don't realize is that a few of them are culturally biased. The way that the responses from the tests are analyzed inappropriately because they are not differentiating between a disorder and a dialect. And the last reason why speech-language pathologists often misdiagnose is because they don't realize that speakers, particularly children, who use African-American English as their first dialect are essentially learning standard American English as a second dialect, similarly to someone who is bilingual. bilingual excuse me. So, naturally, I want to think about some recommendations for these clinicians. Because after all, you're diagnosing students for having a medical issue that they don't actually have. And that's not only unfair to your client or the child that you're working with, but you're eventually perpetrating this issue of the overrepresentation of black students in special education. So, my first solution is for speech pathologists and other educators to better understand these characteristics. As I mentioned, there's so, so many characteristics of African-American English, but above, I have five specific ones where you may notice that during an exam, students particularly say words a little bit differently. They may drop a G in words ending in ing. They may switch words, they may switch letters with other letters in words. The second solution that uh, I would recommend to any of these professionals is to really consider the tests that you use before you administer them. So for example, while doing a lot of research, I came across three that kept popping up that have not been good for students of certain cultures, particularly African American um, cult communities and Hispanic communities as well. Um, the first is the goldman Fristo test of articulation, uh, second edition as well as third edition. The second test um, that has been recognized as not being um, a valid test to use or reliable test to use is the gray oral reading test, second edition. And the last is the index of um, productive syntax. All of these which should not be used if you do not know how to properly use them, if you do not know how to properly read the scores, considering that they do not support certain cultures. Um, if you know that they are culturally biased, it's okay to use them if you know how to interpret the results correctly, but it's best to stay away from them if you know that you could be working with a child who's speaking with African American English. And my third solution, last solution provided for these SLPs, is that they should remember that these students are learning two dialects. At home, there's most likely a huge chance that they are using African American English as the primary dialect with friends, families, and other, other members in their community. So what's really good for the students is to know that they have a culturally responsive SLP who understands and motivates them to still be who they are while going through the phonological milestones of learning standard American English in the classroom or during cl clinical sessions. Excuse me. So my overall recommendations are for SLPs to understand what African-American English is, to know that it is very specific in terms of its characteristics. The second thing that SLPs need to remember, or speech-language pathologists, they need to remember that there are certain tests that are just not going to provide the information that they need to make the accurate diagnosis. And lastly, they, 
SLPs need to remember that they have to essentially care for their students, support their students, and guide them through their phonological milestones while learning standard American English in the classroom. So in conclusion, if speech language pathologists do these things that I've spoke about, as well as constantly learning and doing research, being a good supportive role model for the clients that they serve, not only will we minimize the chances of African American students getting into special education, but we will also let people know that who they are as a human with their culture and history, we'll teach them that it's not disabling. It's not a problem. Thank you. <laughs>